In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Beloved, we are gathered together this morning, whatever the constraint that we must live by, to celebrate a great and holy life. A great and holy life of one who has been the patron of this community for a thousand years, and for two hundred celebrated and praised in this building. I speak, of course, of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is, as others have mentioned before, she is the ultimate rags to riches story. A peasant girl from an obscure, occupied territory in the Middle East, exalted by God through faith, as Queen of Heaven, we call her. The Orthodox, just before they receive Holy Communion, remember her. They say, O oh, higher than the seraphim, incomparably higher than the cherubim, thou who in violet didst bring forth God the Word, we magnify you. We can never escape the fact that Jesus Christ is given to us through the womb of a virgin mother. And that has made her the most recognizable female image in the whole world. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us keep a moment of silence to prepare ourselves with pure hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries and by calling to mind our sins. We have done what was wrong in the Lord's sight and chosen what displeased him. Yet as a mother comforts her child, so shall the Lord himself comfort us. So let us come to him who knows our every deed and thought. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, Amen. heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who stooped to raise fallen humanity through the childbearing of Blessed Mary, grant that we who have seen your glory revealed in our human nature and your love made perfect in our weakness may daily be renewed in your image and conformed to the pattern of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from Micah. 
But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrata, who are the one of the little lands of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from Romans chapter 8. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those who he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those who he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew.
Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be the child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just, as, just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please sit down. Before I begin, I want to say, probably voicing what some of you are feeling, some of you at least, and that is what a delight it is to, I got the First time the choir brings back together in any semblance. Um, delight to hear you singing this morning. Necessarily, it must be in small chunks to start with, so you get used to it, listening to one another at such a distance. But in my experience, there's nothing that transforms worship more than music and its quality. So thank you to God for it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes you know that you are living through history. Our forebears, upwards of a thousand of them, by all accounts, who were present for the consecration of this church in February 1820, will have known that they were living through history and would never have forgotten those days. The sort of way in which some of us speak about those extraordinary days following the uh, accidental death of the Princess of Wales. For 800 years, their medieval parish church, Old St Mary's, site now filled by St John's, where we have just celebrated. But tiny, and very tired, the old church had been demolished two years earlier. For the parishioners of these parts in those days, the feelings would have been intensified by other events, because a new chapter was opening nationally, not just locally. Less than a week before the consecration of this building, George III, still today, the oldest and longest reigning king in British history, who for 30 years had suffered painfully for everyone to see, had finally died. It would be a further two weeks before his enormous funeral at Windsor. And it was into that gap between his death and his funeral that the consecration of this church fell. Very few people around here would have been able to remember life, certainly without old St Mary's, or without what they called him Farmer George, and no one knew what the future would hold, especially with that rather controversial Prince Regent clambering up onto the throne. Now we perhaps share something of that same feeling today, as we look back on an era of our lives that has frankly closed behind us. Unclear what we are going to be carrying into an uncertain future ahead of us. And it's into this moment that the Virgin Mary, Barthwick and patron, sorry, Barthwick's patron for 
more than 800 years, steps this morning with grace and wisdom. Two days after George's funeral, a commemoration concert was held for the old king in the Theatre Royal in London, what's now the Royal Opera House. And it featured excerpts of his favourite music, principal among them Handel's Messiah. And the famous aria, which is introduced by the words from our Gospel, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us, featured by a star singer of the time in the programme. I know, because I have the programme here, the poster, it, it looks like the last night of the proms about three times over, all on one evening. Uh, you can look at it afterwards if you're interested. In that aria, we are reminded, and in that prophecy, we are reminded that the old covenant with its laws and its prophecies, all that God's ancient people had ever known, had now arrived at a new beginning, and with it the old world was closing behind them. The period of the law was ending, and the period of grace was dawning, recreating the old. Full of grace, the angel called Mary. In the birth of the Virgin Mary, which we celebrate in two days' time in the Church at large, and in the birth of her Divine Son, an unstoppable and grace-filled transformation of that old world was happening. An unimaginable and frankly uncontrollable newness I bet if you ask any mother their experience of carrying a child, they will remember very distinctly the unstoppability of the whole experience and also the unknownness of the whole experience. What will this child be? Old mysteries, laws and promises were giving way to a new revelation of God's reality and truth. You see, from the very beginning of her life, who the Virgin Mary is, is bound up with who Jesus is. You cannot pull them apart. Her body is always the place, the holy place, the sanctuary, where God is at home. In the Gospel stories we see her involvement with her son, her young motherhood, her attendance in the mission field, her presence at Calvary, there to receive the resurrection good news, and her prayer with the Church for the descent of the Holy Spirit. And the climax of this life, a life lived in the Spirit alongside her Son, is her entry into his resurrection glory. When we are alongside her, we are alongside him in his obedience, his suffering, and his glory. And surely we are praying that in our own lives we will become more like her life, shaped and marked and moved by her Son at every moment. And it's this inner, active faith that Jesus praises in, in his own mother, above all things. You remember, in Luke 11, there's an incident where a woman in the crowd, a nun named woman, we do not know, who was thrilled by what Jesus was saying, his insight and his wisdom, she shouts out, Surely the womb that bore you is blessed, and the breasts that nursed you. And he immediately replies, no, it is those who hear the word of God and obey it that are blessed. And who has ever believed and obeyed God's word 
more perfectly than his mother. It's not being a mother that makes her great, it's her faith that makes her great. She who, according to her cousin Elizabeth, had believed all that had been spoken to her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Jesus affirms this even more strongly when he says, Here are my, bro my mother, my brothers, my sisters, anyone who does God's will. And the Gospels make it clear that Mary's response grew and developed as she grew and developed. She came to understand more fully the answer she had freely given to Gabriel when she was a young woman. The letter to the Hebrews says of Jesus, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And it's not surprising that his mother also discovered as she went on, or, as rather, or rather as her son went on to his cross, what her original choice would fully involve. As God was revealing a new world coming into existence through her son, she came, and not without suffering, to a clearer insight of the word of God to her. And every time she heard it, she kept it, deepened it, and trusted it. Now, whenever we look at an icon, a panel image of the Virgin Mary, which we now see so, more, so much more frequently in our Western culture, though it belongs to our Eastern brothers and sisters, we see Mary as what she finally became. It's not a photograph. It's an image of what she fully became. Beyond all those difficult questions, beyond the crucifixion, beyond love's victory over death and sin. We see her at the end of her journey, as St. Paul says, when the decaying puts on undecaying, when the dying puts on undying. Now there is an infinite number of ways in which we can draw from the experience of this peasant girl who became the first lady of heaven. No matter what our age, our gender, our activity or place in life. Infinite, of course, because Mary points us to the Church's own vocation. In the great tradition of the, of the Christian faith, that is, of the Church's across the world. Mary is never detached from her son, but she's also never detached from the church either, of which she is an image. The church is you and me, is called to be the place where Christ lives, the temple of God and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Like her, the church is called to bring Christ present and show him to the world, to embody in its life not just its own wishes, but God's mission, God's desire to reconcile and unite the world to himself. Now like her, each one of us has already said yes to that vocation in baptism. You have already said your yes. But in each generation, the Christians have to grow in their response to the Word of God. We have to live through the questionings, the incomplete understandings of our poor minds, even learning obedience to God's Word by facing challenges and pain with courage. We have to discover that there is no new life without death to the old life. We have to discover that there is no life in the new creation without death to the old creation. There is no entering into the new gift without longing and praying and working to it, towards it. 
So then, I'm nearly done. What might Mary, the first disciple of her son, be saying to us now, 200 years after this church was set aside for the worship of Almighty God, in the midst of the greatest pandemic anyone alive has ever seen, in a society and a world and a church brought to its knees, with an old world sliding into the past and a new landscape opening up in front of all of us, whether we're 8, 18 or 80. Well, perhaps it's something like this. In recent decades, in the world that is now passing out of sight, the churches have tended to reduce the reality and truth of Jesus Christ and his resurrection to the practice of good deeds, to helping our neighbours, securing justice, welcoming refugees, providing for the elderly and disadvantaged, and speaking clearly to society's concerns. Now, even though, of course, all these deeds are necessary, the main teaching of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, whom the Virgin Mary brought to birth, was not goodness. Based on goodness, the Gospel is reduced to a kind of humanism. And as many men and women of goodwill will show us, human generosity does not require faith. What requires faith is the Word of God. It requires faith to receive it, to live it, and to fulfil it. Mary's testimony of the announcement of good news the good news that Jesus Christ has shared our humanity and totally identified with us and defeated sin and death. And he has opened the doors of an infinite future with God. Our good deeds are a consequence of the good news. Our good, our good deeds are not the cause of it. That priority is really to open the doors of heaven for ourselves. I want to end with the words of that aria which was sung in London two days after the King's funeral and only a few days after this church was consecrated. O thou that tellest good tidings to Zion, get up into the high mountains. Lift up your voice with strength, be not afraid. And say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. saying together, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the
communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. In peace and in hope, let us pray to God now, for the Church, for the world, for this community, and for all those who with, who, with needs lie heavy on our hearts. O Lord our God, we come into your presence today with joy, celebration and thanks. Help us to know that you are here with us now, that your spirit is with us and abides with us always. As we praise you today for Mary and for 200 years of the life and witness of this church, we pray for the church worldwide. We pray for all who witness to your love in words, deeds, and service. For those whose service is always in the background, and for all who stand up for you, even when their lives are in danger. We ask your blessing on all who carry those responsibilities. Guide them with the judgments that are just and compassionate. Give them words which are wise. We pray today for Father Peter, our church wardens, Nikki and Jan, for Bishop Jonathan, and especially at this time for Bishop Peter. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for your world which struggles to live justly and in peace. We lift to you those who have to search for daily food or walk long distance for clean water. Those who live in fear of disease or war. Those who have had to flee their homes and families. We think particularly today of the peoples of Beirut. Belarus and Hong Kong. May hearts which have been darkened by violence and greed discover a different light and a better way. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we pray for the spiritual health of our church and our community. May we be a household of faith, where people are welcomed and nourished. As we thank you for Mary, the mother of our Lord, may we, like her, say yes, following her example of trust in you and obedience to your will. May we share her spirit of acceptance and care as a mother. We lift to you all our children and young people at this difficult time, settling into a new term with all its changes. For the staff of our schools and colleges and universities, we pray especially for our local schools. For all who lead this community by election or position, May their leadership be that of the servants, and their goals those of the kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We thank you, Father, for those people who sustain us by their love and forgiveness. We pray for our families and our friends, for those we find difficult to love. We ask for trust, understanding and respect. Bless the homes of our parish, where there is sorrow and anxiety. We lift to you all those who are ill in any kind of way, and those we know who are on our hearts at this time. May 
remember your love, did, and give it back. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. ever present and loving God, we give you thanks for all who have gone before us, those who built up this church and community, all who dedicated themselves to you in this holy place. We pray for all who have been baptised and confirmed here, all who have married and found support here, all who have been buried from here, and all who have found new hope. We give thanks for all who have ministered here, and all who have shared in its mission and outreach and in its maintenance. Grant us, with all who have known you in their hearts, a share in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with you. In a way that is safe, let us share with one another Christ's peace.
this my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. God our Father, your handmaid Mary fed your son with her virgin breast, nourish us at this table with the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, Almighty Father, ever living God, to proclaim the wonders you have worked in all your saints. And on this feast of Mary, ever blessed, to echo her praise of your loving kindness. For you have truly done great things, and holy is your name. Your mercy is on those who fear you in every generation. When you looked with favour on your lowly servant, you remembered your promise of mercy and gave the world through her, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Through him, the hosts of heaven adore you and rejoice in your presence for ever. May our voices join with theirs in the triumphant hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of us. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ has come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Virgin Mary among all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence. Our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and 
So that the sacrament can be distributed safely, it will now be administered in silence. Therefore, together we acknowledge the body and blood of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood.
beloved, over these last months, it has been for the vast majority of you, I say that rather than the clergy ourselves, has been a most challenging time. We all know that a human being is both body and spirit. Our bodies are experiencing a threat and a challenge, but our spirits need also to be strengthened. And Christians believe more than strengthening, they need to continue being transformed into the Lord whom we worship, who makes us part of his body. So I want to, in a curious way, perhaps salute you, lay people, who have remained faithful even through months of being separated from the Blessed Sacrament and from listening and responding to the Word of God together in worship. Thanks be to God we can now do that, cling to it. I want to encourage you never to forsake the gifts that the Lord wants to give you as a body, not just as individual Christians. And I wanted to remind you of a wonderful phrase of one of the ancient fathers, when he's speaking about the sacrament. And he calls it the medicine of immortality. We know what a sacrament is. It's an outward form of an inward grace. Your souls need that inward grace and he gives you the sacrament. Please do not separate yourself from it because it is the medicine of immortality. However much our bodies may be threatened by something which wishes to occupy it and kill it. The medicine of immortality. Cling to that phrase. That is what the Eucharist is enabling for us. And may God bless you. Let us pray. God most high, whose hand made more, the word made, made flesh, we thank you that in this sacrament of, of our redemption, you visit us with your Holy Spirit and overshadow us by your heart. Strengthen us to walk with Mary the joyful path of obedience, and so bring forth the fruits of holiness. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. When we were doing all the assessments of the Catechism of the Church, these drawings came to light of Barclay Hall St Mary's Church, in 1784, and a pencil drawing of old St Mary's Church made in 1807. And Helen Martin's has been praying for us, and we have been blessed. Certainly, Certainly an image of old St. Mary's before it, before it became ruinous. <laughs> but it's, uh, it shows how tiny it was. It contained only, it could hold only a hundred people. If I give you that. Would you please stand? Almighty Father, on this day in which we commemorate our forebears, the building and consecration of this house of prayer, dedicated to St. Mary. We recall our fathers of old St. Mary's.
thank you for the transmission of faith throughout the generations. Bless and hallow, we pray, these images which will be kept here in the church. May they serve as a reminder to all who visit here of the length and strength and potential of faith in Christ for the good and health of this community. We bless this in, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sorry to bring you all down to the mundane matters of maintenance and finance. Um, last week I encouraged you all to read Father Peter's letter in Barthwick News. I hope you've done that. Um, he talks about um, looking at the significant deficit in our day-to-day -day accounts. I don't think I'm letting out any secrets when I tell you that during the, the months of real lockdown, the church was losing something in the order of £3,000 per month. And with the lack of lettings for the hall and the church, um, we are still not getting in the steady income that we have done in the past. Uh, car park is beginning to pick up, thank you very much, Mark. Um, but please read this letter from, uh, that Father Peter has written and think about it, pray about it, and if you are able to up your, um, your stewardship to the church, um, then there is a form to fill in that you can bring back in an envelope and, um, and that will help the treasurer to work out our finances for the future. So please, can I encourage you to, to read this? Thank you. Would you please stand? I think there's nothing at all mundane about, well, maybe there's something mundane about maintenance and finance, but we all know about it. You do both of those things to each of your own bodies, so that this building and your fellowship also needs that kind of attention. It's hardly surprising at all. Um, so please take this seriously. You're not alone in the Church of England in facing these kinds of problems, indeed in the other churches also. Um, but it is a real part of our tangible life together uh, that we have these responsibilities for one another. Friends, let us bow our heads and ask for God's blessing. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. 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 Thanks.